What's up guys? Thanks for stopping back by the channel here at the Auto Shop Life, hanging out with me, Jim, JRC54. So today we're gonna give Snap on a hard time, knock on him a little bit, and tell you tell you guys my top five reasons I hate this epic toolbox. Check it out. Shut up and sit down. Alright guys, so jumping right onto it, maybe a little surprise to you guys, you know, yes there is reasons I hate this toolbox, there's also a lot of good, you know, maybe I'll do a follow up video on top five reasons I love this toolbox, but getting to it, you know, I, uh, now that I've had the box for, you know, say going on five years now, probably finishing up my fourth year going on to five years on owning this thing, um, as a whole probably only about two years, but you know, now that it's getting full, I've been using it, obviously long-term review on it, things like that. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of things that, uh, you know, definitely Snap-on could have improved on. A lot of things that maybe they could have did different. A lot of things that I didn't see or notice when I first bought it. But the first one, obviously being the cost of these Epic Toolboxes. Now, you guys know out there, you guys shop around, see prices on them. I was buying this stuff individually, it's super expensive. Snap-on and their premium price, it's just... You know, you, I probably could have bought a nice car for the cost of this toolbox. I don't know if I ever told any of you guys, but I'd have to say all in on this toolbox, probably just about 30 grand I probably have in just the toolbox itself. I want to say, you know, the main, the main 84, the lockers, two of the overheads and the workstation, I think that was maybe right around 18 or 19 buying as a whole. You guys know this box is pretty much paid off. You know, most of it I paid cash for, the side lockers, the overheads, things like that I paid straight up cash for. You know, I did finance a little bit. It didn't take me long to pay off because the interest is what gets you on it. You know, obviously, you know, paying 30 grand for something is a lot and then they try to add on their interest and the way Snap-on does their interest where, you know, they interest you on everything that's owed each month, you know, they end up making a killing on us. You know, so if it takes a long time to pay something like this off, something like this could cost you 50 60 grand but i wanted to get it done rip off the band-aid pay it off you know i did save up for this toolbox for years and years and years i worked out of a small two small stand-up craftsmen and that little hutch thing over there cram packed to the max you know all the tools that i owned at the time for probably five years longer than i had to waiting to save up knowing that i wanted one of these so end up picking up you know the 84 Back in 2014, I'd say, or something like that, it has the older style epic drawer, you know, the longer power drawer where they, you know, they stand up, it's the longer drawer. Now, of course, they switched it to just the drawer style ones and probably for good reason. I, I got an issue with the power drawer. You know, it's, it's not big enough. It doesn't seem to hold the weight that it once was. That's one of the reasons too. But big one on here, the cost. Can't stand the cost of this. If they had another option that had this much versatility and be able to add on to things like the Epic had. You know, back then when I picked this up, there was really was no power drawer out there. There was really nothing that you could expand and things like this. You know, a lot of them are copiers. You know, they, you know, they, they imitate exactly what this is. So you do have a lot more options nowadays, but when I picked this up, the options weren't there. Also, I, the shop paid for it anyway, so it's not like the money came out of my pocket. But getting to it, another big one, talking about the power drawer, number two, is obviously the power drawer. Now, it's probably a better design than just having a smaller drawer. I do like the height. Um, you obviously can't make a drawer stretch all the way across. You know, that drawer to me would be too big. I do like the longer drawers, per se. That's how I ordered it. But that power drawer, now that I've got it full of tools and trying to utilize it, there's not a really whole lot of room in there. You know, I, I almost feel like having just two smaller power drawers would be able to be better on it because then I could just kind of stack the tools on top of each other, have one for chargers maybe, have the other ones for, you know, the actual impacts and battery power tools. But, you know, the, the, the drawer's not the greatest. It's not the greatest design. I have to stack tools on it. You guys can see here in the clips, you know, I got this thing pretty much packed to the max. You can see where the power strip is, you know, trying to stick tools down in there and then have wires sticking out. You guys can see I put this other power strip down there to have kind of manage the cables and all that stuff down in there but you know this one's definitely full definitely got to figure something out as far as what I'm gonna do you know you know I can't really fit anything more in here and yes I do have more tools you guys can see 
Up here on the workstation, I have some of the snap-on battery power tools that I use a lot. So, you know, I don't want them in there between the weight. You know, the drawer can't handle the weight. You can kind of feel it struggling, just like every other full drawer now. Um, and just being able to get to the tool when I need it. You know, I don't want to have to take three or four tools out to get to the tool that I want. So a big one on there, the power drawer. Although it's probably better than having just one little power drawer, now that it's full, it doesn't work to full potential. It doesn't work to my standard and what I would like. Definitely an issue on that one. So sticking with the drawers and all that stuff, the other big one is obviously the side lockers. They have like four or five strong magnets on there. You know, although towing this thing and moving it around, you know, I like it to be secure, but getting into these lockers sometimes fast, you've got something in your hand, whether it's a part or greasy hands, you know, they're hard to pull. I think I've mentioned that in a video before. Um, one of them on this side, one of the magnets ended up falling off on me. I had to re-glue it on there. You guys can see it in the clip here, but, you know, I noticed if you grab these lockers, you know, towards the middle, you really got to give them a pull, you know, and I'm, I'm a bigger guy, 6'1", you know, it's over 200 pounds. You know, you, you, I find myself struggling sometimes to open these drawers. Lauren acts like they're locked sometimes. They're not even locked. She thinks I'm locking them and they're not locked. You know, it's just, uh, it's kind of an overkill, but I could see where Snap-on was going with it as far as, you know, being secure, but they probably could have cut back on a magnet or two, or at least did some kind of latch style, like they do the drawers here, to where you could open them. Just my thoughts, but definitely an issue on that one. Definitely something I hate about it. So finish talking about the power drawers. We got number three there, getting on to number four. Still on the drawer side of it, not sh really sure why Snap-on never went with like a no slam drawer. You know, these drawers, now that they're weighted down, full of tools and all that stuff, I didn't have it completely full like this when I first bought the box, so it might have been something I never noticed before, but now that they're pretty much packed, especially these bigger drawers here, you know, these things slam hard, and you don't even have to push them that hard. Back here in the back of the shop, it's I got it tipped on a little bit of an angle just because of the floor. You know, I, I try... I tried to level it, but then I had to move the box, and it's just a pain to keep level. Plus, it's not that far off. But the amount of weight shutting these drawers, I mean, these things slam super hard. You know, I'm not sure why they didn't go with something like the Milwaukee toolboxes or the Husky toolboxes where you get that no slam drawers. I mean, kind of like my dressers at my house are no slam drawers. I mean, it's not hard technology to put in there. You know, I'm wondering. You know, with a price tag, a premium price tag on these Epics, you know, they should go something with a no slam drawer or a soft close of some sort because when you got these drawers filled up with tools, that amount of weight, I mean, it shakes the whole drawer. I mean, if I let that drawer close from a quarter of the way open or even halfway open, it slams hard. You know, it almost knocks stuff over. If I had a drink up there, it would probably spill over. But definitely a big issue. I, I you know, I definitely find myself spending more time at my toolbox when I go to close it I gotta ease it close and I'm standing there wasting time shutting these drawers I want to be able to open a drawer grab what I need you know give it a shove walk away and let the drawer close itself another big issue on these drawers is they're just uneven you know between the hinges when they're weighed down you know they want to open you know weird not to mention the squeaks you gotta constantly keep these hinges sprayed I did a video on that how to take care of these hinges it, it's better, you know, the more, the more I spray and take care of them, it gets better and better, you know, but obviously guys out there that don't spray the hinges and all that, between the squeaks and all that stuff, I mean, you know, did I pay extra money for having the extra snap-on squeaks when I open these drawers and they wobble open because they're so heavy and feel like they can handle the weight but feel like they can't handle the weight, like they're at two of their max already and they're full of what they should be full of and not like I'm overdoing it here, at least I feel that way, that's why I spent the extra money on these. So, so that's a big one. So that was number four. So getting on to number five, and this one's strictly cosmetic, you know, I'd say in my eyes, but it bothers someone like me. So I talked about in the beginning of the video, I had purchased the 84, the workstation, the overheads, the two lockers, and then about, you know, 13 months later or so, I ended up getting the extra 60, you know, and another overhead and things like that. But in that time frame, you know, they not only changed the power drawer design, you know, where they have it on a smaller drawer, they started putting power drawers in the lockers and things, because I definitely would have bought a power drawer locker, but they also changed the casters on these things. Now, the difference being is, you know, now they have a, where you could lock it on both sides. You know, I, I definitely dig the newer design a little bit better. Uh, to say that the older design wasn't doing what it was supposed to do, you know, they still had the locking pin and all that stuff. So, you know, getting done what you had to get done was just fine. But in order to change design, 
it defeats the purpose of me buying the box. You know, I bought an Epic at the time because I wanted to be able to expand whenever I needed. If I needed more tool room, I could go with another row of overheads or I could go with another set of lockers. You know, and over time, you're buying this stuff, if they change the design, this stuff doesn't match like it once did. You know, so that's kind of a big pet peeve of mine, like I said, strictly cosmetic, but it bothers me. And you know, with the money I spent on this box, I want things to be perfect. You know, Snap-on should find a design, stick with it. If these casters were failing, you know, when I bought the other side, they should have offered me four new casters so I could change them to mesh. Maybe I should have mentioned that, but at first, maybe I didn't notice it, it didn't bother me. After years of owning it, things like that bother me. So, wrapping this one out, I believe that was five. Uh, I guess I'll know when I edit this together, but there's more, there's more to that. You know, my top five reasons I hate this Epic. If you guys own Epics, you might have five new reasons, but definitely the big ones for me are you know, the power drawer, the no slam, it's mostly drawer related, you know, opening, closing issues, things like that. The casters, I'll get over, you know, I'm not losing sleep at night or over it or anything like that. And it's not like, you know, I just tried putting that on there to add another one to this one, because trust me, I could think of more reasons, you know, the, the way the overheads close, you know, after a certain point, they kind of just slam close and the, after the strong arms collapse, little things like that, you know, it's, it's, it's not like it's a big deal, but you know, definitely some reasons for you guys to think about. You guys out there looking to get an Epic, you know, if little things like this bothers you, like the no slam drawers, now that they're full, look into something else. You know, like I said, when I got this box, there wasn't a whole lot of options as opposed to what I was looking for. I did need a bigger box, you know, things like that. I, I, I wanted something where I could keep continue to grow. You know, I wanted the box to grow as I grew and things like that. But you know, Snap-on keeps changing the design for the better it's not always for the better, you know, and bring one up to mention the new tops they have now. So the I got this, the Rhino line top back then where they, they sent it out to have it done. I don't know, Line X or whoever did it. Now they're doing them in-house. I don't know if you guys seen the real thin, you know, Rhino, I don't know what they're calling it, a line, you know, it's real paper thin stuff. It looks like it's not gonna last. I saw it on the rock and roll truck. I don't like it, maybe some of you guys do like it. I like a more rugged design that I know is gonna last. I've dropped stuff on this, I've heated it up, I've done all that stuff, it's held up. From what I see in those other ones, it looks like you tap them a little bit and it's like a, it looks like a sticker. It looks like a skateboard piece of, you know, it, it, looks like, it, it looks like the top of a skateboard, like a, pretty much a piece of sandpaper with glue on it that they just kind of wrapped in it. It's real cheap in my eyes. You know, they did add the light under it on, on a lot of the newer ones, but the Rhino line, no thank you. I'll take a pass. I'd rather take something older like this. I do like the older power drawer. Not now that it's full, but I'd take something like that over one small drawer. You know, maybe if I had three or four power drawers or a couple power lockers, at the time they didn't have it. You know, now I'm just rambling, going on and on, but wrap this one up for you guys. As always, like, comment, make sure to subscribe, and we will check you in the next one. Signing out. Oh, you guys are still here. So, I put this little tidbit here at the end because, again, I gotta thank you guys. We hit 10,000 subscribers. I told you guys I was gonna do a giveaway. I wanted to do it a little different than I did on the last giveaway when I gave away a Snap-on scanner. I don't know if you guys have been following the channel for a while or watch some of my older videos, but when we hit 2,000 subscribers, we gave away the Snap-on Solus Ultra. Not to say I gave it to a guy that didn't deserve it. You know, I'm sure he deserved it. I'm sure he's using it. But, you know, when I send something to somebody and all I ask for is maybe a post or a picture of him using it, never heard anything in the last year or whatever. Ed, you know who you are. You know, I hope you're using the scanner. I hope you enjoyed it. But my fault you know I, I want when I do these giveaways like this I want it to go to a channel supporter someone that actually needs it someone that's gonna use it and things like that especially when they're bigger ones like this you know when I do giveaways up for everybody it's up for everybody this giveaway I want to do a little different I want to put this at the end of the video to make sure for one you guys watch the full video and not just maybe get to the good parts or you don't want to listen to me ramble or if I talk too loud or because I got long hair whatever it's it's not that. I, I, you guys got to have your own opinions. I make these videos for you guys. I give away my stuff and, and pay for my things and give them away to you guys for you guys. You know, it's not for me. It's not, it really doesn't better for me any t other than helping techs. Big on that, still big on that. But I got my hands on another Snap-on scanner. 
just a peek here, we got the modest edge. This one, I believe, 18.4, I want to say, something like that. But we're going to do this giveaway a little bit different. Um, it's saying off -grade, upgrade may be available. This thing, 18.4 we're at. Got the leads, charger, you got the OBD cable, the soft case. Got my hands on that. We're doing for the 10,000 giveaway. So to get into this one, doing this video through YouTube, but it's going to be an Instagram thing. So if you guys out there don't have an Instagram, you know, I'm sorry. You know, obviously you got to be subscribed to my channel. You got to follow me on Instagram. But what I want for you to get in here, I'm going to be picking a one, but I'm going to be doing a little research on you. I'm going to make sure, you know, you're a guy out there active on my channel. You know, another thing I want to know, you guys want to get in on winning this, make sure to follow me on Instagram. Hit me with an instant message. Let me know how long you've been a mechanic for. You know, whether you're a diesel mechanic, auto mechanic, whatever it may be, how many years you've been doing it, and why you're going to need a scanner like this. Obviously, there's other choices, but this one will be free. I'll be picking a winner probably within a month or so, give or take. So for you guys out there that ain't getting this, guys don't, don't watch all the videos, it's going to be a little bit shorter, so you have more of a chance of winning. So you guys want to win something like this, great scanner, got my hands on, told you guys I was going to do a 10K giveaway. So hit me up on Instagram, let me know how long you've been a mechanic for, what type of work you're in, all that stuff, and let me know why you need something like this, why you're gonna use something like this, why do you need a snap-on scanner, or why do you need a scanner in general? And I will be picking a winner and giving this thing away, ship it to you. So, as always again, guys, good luck on the giveaway. Just sorry I gotta do it like this, but my choice, my scanner, my giveaway. I appreciate the 10K subscribers. Keep growing on this YouTube channel. Signing out.